Hello and welcome to a new maintenance blog. In a previous blog, based on the Jabsco manual twist lock toilet, I did a full strip down, give it a good clean and even replaced some of the parts. But it turns out that was only half the job because the sanitation or waste hose pipe also needed attention. Um, well, despite changing all the valves in the system, um, it seemed to work for about a day or two, but I think that was only because we'd emptied the water from the poo pipe. So now that's filled up again, it just every time you pump there seems to be an airlock in it. Um, and I think we've eliminated everything. Um, the only thing that it can be now is a blockage in the pipe that leads up to the black water tank up there. And the kids can't use the, the pump. So they're just leaving stuff in the toilet which needs to be pumped out by us. We tried pumping a little bit of acid through it which cleaned it a little bit, but obviously we don't want to pump loads of acid through the system because it all ends up in the ocean eventually. So I'm going to take it off, have a look at it, and if it's not that, then there's obviously something inside the black water tank. But this has been a mission. This has been around for months. You know, we think we've cured it, and then it kind of just happens over again. The cubby holes here—they're all covered in carpet, and I think that was to um, help wick away any condensation in the cupboards. Um, the, the idea being that it soaks up the moisture and then releases it slowly, and so you don't get that build-up of condensation and puddles of water collecting everywhere. But over time, it kind of grows a, a black mold. Uh, which is pretty disgusting when you see it um, and I think it's a common problem with all animals. Got my gloves on. So the pipe I'm going to remove is the pipe which pumps everything up into the black water tank. So it starts down here and we've got a bit of a leak down here but I think that's because it's so clogged up that nothing's going anywhere. So it starts here and then it goes up there about a meter and a half into the black water tank, which is a 60 litre black water tank up here. And then it goes down there eventually and out into the ocean. But obviously you can't release that until you're about 12 miles out. So all I'm doing now is I'm trying to pump as much fresh water into the pipe as possible. So when it all comes apart, I won't be having to handle anything nasty coming back out. It'll hopefully just be fresh water. But it's even now you can see how Kind of an airlock which it's hard to pump i mean luckily whatever comes out is going to go straight down the shower drain so it's going to stink no matter what ah, there she goes ah, out. oh dear right you can already see some gunk in there i can see it's coated the pipe inside so it's probably a lot worse further up where it's never been clean that's just fallen out the pipe. That's not even stuff that's caked on the pipe. That's just stuff that's been hanging loose inside the pipe. So I think we've probably found our problem now. Uh, you can also see there's the uh, bonding strap which prevents... Oh. So that's come off as well. That was quite well hidden, that, because that was behind there and I couldn't see where it was. But that is the bonding strap which bonds this eventually to the anodes which stops this corroding. So it's like any job, you start one job and then you open up a can of worms and you soon, suddenly realize the job is morphs into something way, way bigger than what you first expected. One of the common problems in animals is when this corrodes, the whole thing needs re in and a new pipe put in. And it can be quite a tricky problem. So, and I think that's probably the reason why, because the bonding strap here, the bonding wire is actually corroded itself. So there's the copper pipe leading into the black water tank. That looks like we're all right. Oh my god, that is well furred up. Yeah, there she is. It's completely caked. So that is all calcium. Some people do just replace the pipe at this point, but sanitation waste hose pipes are surprisingly expensive and the cheap ones don't exclude the odor completely. Um, so it's kind of a, a bit of a false economy buying the cheaper types. So if you're on a budget like we are, it's more cost effective to invest in a good rubber mallet. So this is living the dream, hitting a ship pipe with a rubber mallet. That was in the pipe. That has been collecting up. In fact, there's something really weird living in there. Is there? Yeah. That red and black thing. I used to have a job in an office with surrounded by sexy girls. <laughs> the office used to pay for takeouts, so we used to sit in the office all day 
making computer games. Just having a bit of a nostalgia trip at the moment. And now you've just got one sexy girl to ask you to do, clean her pipes. <laughs> so this is boat life. When I woke up this morning, I had a to-do list which read, go for a run, learn Spanish, clean the poop pipe, update the website, edit some videos, pick the kids up, um, fix the batteries, fix the, solar, fix the solar wires in place. You've just got to be so resourceful to live this lifestyle. It's, it's incredible. Would you wear those socks to work, Woody, if you were in your sort of air-conditioned office when the, the girls bring you coffee, would you be wearing those socks? Dos perros. Okay, so to give it a proper clean, I'm going to block it off with a bung, a wooden bung. And then I'm going to partially fill it with some aquaferta and give it a good slosh about. And I'm wondering whether I should actually, at the end of it, just put some olive oil in there just to lubricate the sides a bit. Might give a few more weeks extra use out of it. Olive oil? Yeah. I think you spent too long in the med, Woody. Extra virgin olive oil, of course. <laughs> Only the best for our food pipes. What I'll do afterwards is I'll highly dilute it and then take it to the marina toilets and put it down there so it doesn't go straight into the water. I'm just swilling around the aquaferter inside. This will dissolve the rest of the calcium. I just swilled it around and this has just dropped out the end. It's wire wool for cleaning pans. And I have no idea how it's got in there. But I suspect at some point we've probably tipped some washing liquid into the toilet, maybe because it was full of oil and the oil is quite good for it. And that was stuck in the bottom and hasn't been noticed and it's worked its way into the pipe. So we've been trying to force all of our waste past this inside the pipe. And don't worry, I did actually sweep up and sluice down the pontoon afterwards. So once that was done, I turned my attention to the holding tank. So I've cleaned this uh, copper neck up a bit and uh, I've noticed both bonding straps. I'm guessing the one goes on from the actual bonding system, then the other one I think goes over there. So I have to check that one afterwards. But I've cleaned the copper up a bit, but I've also noticed that there's a lot of furring inside with calcium, which I'm scraping off now with a screwdriver and it's coming out in spades. So there's still a lot of calcium deposits up inside the pipe, which I can't get to. Um, and I can't get to it from the top end because there is a, of anti-siphon pipe goes inside the black water tank. So even if you fill the black water tank up, it's still not gonna come back through. I've got this sauce bottle and a plastic straw and I've just filled it up with aquaferta. So I'm gonna give the poo pipe a bit of an enema. I'm going to stick it up the poo pipe and squirt it in and hopefully it'll run back down and dissolve the calcium. And I've got a catching in a bowl down here as well. I'm going to shove it right inside. Even it's, this is difficult to get in because of the blockage. A longer screwdriver might work. Well, I think while I'm on the job and now I've got access to the exit pipe, I might as well take that out and have a look as well. So I've sweated on for about half an hour trying to get this pipe out and it's proven really difficult. I can get it out, but I'm not so sure I'm going to get it back in again because the ends where it's flayed out to fit around the pipe um, are a little bit bigger than the holes that it goes through. So I've had a quick feel of the pipe and a tap down the pipe with a hammer um, and it doesn't seem that it's furred up any. So I might just sort of uh, adopt the attitude that if it ain't broke, don't fix it um, and just reinstate it. Um, we've got the worst of the furring out of the pipe going in, um, but I think I'm just going to leave that one. I also took a look inside the holding tank to see if there was any calcium buildup in there, but it was absolutely clear, so it was a job that was wholly unnecessary, really. Okay, I'm just taking a look at the bonding wires here. And you can see it's a bit of a poor connection there, so I'm going to strip those back and uh, make a better connection on there to stop this bit corroding because apparently this is one of the things on the ammo that this neck here starts to corrode and then you've got the whole black water content just coming out inside the boat which obviously you don't want. So this is definitely going to need replacing. 
Recently, I've seen some production boats with galvanic corrosion problems on the, on the rudder stock housing. So galvanic protection on pipes like this are more important than it might first appear. Since the bonding straps back in place, I've splayed them out a bit more for better contact. And also, I've moved them round to the front so I can see if anything starts going wrong there. So that hopefully should be it. And on this one, you can see how little connection there was there. There's like about two threads holding that on. So I'll give that a bit of a clean as well. So using the wire cutter and the wire stripper, I also give that bonding wire a bit of a haircut too. So finally, stick it on the elbow and hopefully it'll be a long time before I have to take this off again. Wow, that is like having a different toilet. You can actually just pump it through without using all that muscle power that we had to use before. It's brilliant. Kids can pump the toilet now and I don't have to do it. Yay! So thanks for watching and a special thank you to our patrons who keep us going through good times and bad. If you found this blog useful and you're the type of person who likes to return a favour, then you can buy me a beer by following the links to PayPal or Patreon in the description below. And now you can also buy one of our crew shirts by following the links to our merch store 